So friends, we got a notice from our utility company saying that they thought we may have a leak. And we were not aware of it, to be honest with you. But our water bill was high, but that's what we thought it was supposed to be. So I did a test where I took a picture. A few days later, the next day, I took another picture. And it's a little over 500 gallons, literally overnight. So I decided to take on a project and replace the water line. And it actually affected our bills. Our bills cut down to about 20% of what they had been being, by the way. So if you get a notice, take notice and get her done. So friends, I am digging down, trying to get to my water pipe. So far I don't see it, but I know that it is about center way under this window, maybe just a little bit further left. I'm gonna take my measuring tape in a moment and measure from where the blocks are with the weep hole. I'm gonna measure from there down because I know about how far down it is, but we got to be getting close. It's somewhere right there. Stay tuned. So there is the pipe. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a trench from here to the meter, which is right there. I'm going to go about 18, 20 inches deep, and I'm going to cut the grass first. I'm going to try to take my spade and cut the grass and put it over here so I could save the grass and put it back. It's not perfect, but it's also not jankity looking and I wanna to try to keep it as good as I can. I don't know if it'll work or not, but we're gonna find out. All right, I've got that part open and I've got it started from here to there. Now I'm gonna go get a trencher and I'm gonna trench. I got the, the grass pulled out right here. And tomorrow I'll go ahead and trench it from here to there, from there back to here, and then I will dig this out, put my line in. Stay tuned. So friends, I rented a trencher, a Beretto. This is a 24 inch with the regular tires. And the reason I use it is because it's gonna be mild on the grass and fairly easy. So I'm gonna try to make as straight a shot as I can from right here up to right there. When I can't go all the way there, I'm gonna hand, have to hand dig a lot of that because I don't want to hit the line now because I'm not ready to put the line in tonight. I'm going to put the line in probably tomorrow, but I want to go ahead and get the trench dug. So I'm going to let you watch. Stay tuned. All right, so what's going on is I'm hitting rock about a foot deep. And I don't mean a little bit of rock, I mean a lot of rock. So I think I'm gonna have to take this thing back and rent a, uh, a backhoe, small backhoe with a little, I don't wanna dig a big trench, but a little bucket that I can dig it out because the trencher ain't gonna do it. I have dug trenches in Memphis, Knoxville, now Nashville. By far, this is the worst. That right there in Knoxville or Memphis would have been done in 20 minutes. This, I've worked for a good period of time and only moved a very short distance. So we're going to abort this mission and go get a bigger piece of equipment. Stay tuned. Friends, I took the trencher back because as I mentioned, there's rocks right here so big that I can't trench. And I called, call before you dig. And the reason I did that was there's a high probability of a gas pipe right here. You can see there's a gas pipe right there. So that gas pipe's coming from somewhere. And also, you see there's electrical over there, all underground. So I don't want to dig up anything and mess up people's uh, gas and electric cable. I think most of the cable stuff is on the other side over there. So hopefully there's very little over here. But you can call, I think it's called 811. And if you call them, they will actually send cable, gas, water, everything that could be underground out here. And they will mark with different colors what's here so you can dig. 
So before I take a big backhoe and start coming in here and digging or a little backhoe, I don't want to damage stuff and dig stuff up. So I've marked where I'm going to be putting my water line with white and they'll do the rest. And then we can start digging here with the little, little backhoe. We're going to make it happen. Yes, we are. So friends, next I'm going to rent this from Home Depot and we're going to go dig. Stay tuned. So friends, 811 call before you dig is an important thing. You can see where I've marked my white line. The yellow line with the flags is gas, which crosses my white line. These red lines are electric. I believe the orange is so these are either electric or cable and telephone it's something that you see that they cross literally right there now hopefully they're deeper than I'm gonna go I'm not gonna try to go real real deep but there's nothing behind me so I'm gonna go ahead and go back up in there and start digging and pulling out and work my way here so a lot of this I'm gonna have to do by hand I have driven I'm covered up so I don't get burned but I have driven I grew up in the pool business, so I drove Case 580 backhoes, generally Case. The early, early ones were White Olivers that my dad had. The later ones were Case 580s. I've never driven this Kubota, but it's tiny. I think it'll be fun. Stay tuned. So it is the next day and you can see that I dug up to there with the machine. I'm going to try to just do a little cleanup right here and then I'm going to hand dig down to the, uh, you can see that the pipe is actually going that way for the water. So I'm going to hand dig and get up under here, but I'm going to first dig with the machine to finish this. And then I'm going to clean up on the other end and get it ready. Make sure that I have all of the stuff that I need to make the connections. Everything I have is right. Once I know that it's right, I'll um, lay my pipe in there. And then I've got a little bit of rock. You see how they've got this little tiny rock here. The rock I bought is a little bigger than that. But I'm going to cover it with rock to try to keep it from being crushed and that kind of stuff. And then I've got these giant rocks to deal with. You see those. So I'm going to be a little bit short of dirt on some level 
so I'll have to deal with that, but it is what it is. Man, I did my best to try to do it without tearing the yard up, but that's, uh, it wasn't in the cards. You see how big these rocks are. When you're hitting stuff like that, you just can't do it by hand, and they're giant. So you can see the hose going through the, or the pipe going through the wall. So I'll have to finish digging this out. There we go. We're getting closer. So friends, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. That is the copper pipe coming out. You see it down in the meter, right down in there. But right now I'm gonna dig down in here with my metal detecting spade and clean it up around there and get it ready. All right, so next I'm gonna turn the water off. I happen to have a tool for that, but if you don't, you can do this with a pair of pliers. You just twist that lock right there. And you can see they can even put a padlock on it where you can't turn your water back on. So when that happens, I'm going to take this loose and I've got it all clean, ready to go. So I'm gonna have to go clean the rest of my path up and get that dug up down at the far end, get it cleared where there's no pump right there. So just get after it. All right, so now I'm gonna cut this in. I've got the other end prepared and cut, so I'm gonna cut this. You see where it was pulling down and kinked going through the wall. So we're gonna to try to eliminate that in the future. Yes, we are. So this thing was in a serious bind. You can see where it's oval. So that at some point that would have sheared off I'm gonna to try to eliminate that from happening in the future and also run enough pipe that if I needed to run another water line, I could just run another one real quick. So friends, I'm gonna take this out. You see that it's three quarter when you get past that. But I'm gonna do one inch, or I'm telling you wrong, I'm gonna do three quarter. You see it's, it's half here, but it's three quarter there, which it's all bizarre. That may be one inch right there. So I'm going to see. I'm going to pull this out and we're going to see. Stay tuned. All right. So I've got it in. It's not pretty, but I put the pipe dope here. Uh, they're dope dealers, by the way, at Home Depot. And uh, that's where I got this dope from. You got the threaded three quarter, three quarter, three quarter, a new ball valve. You can see I'm going to turn it off, which the other ball valve was that old cheap CPVC stuff then a 90, and then you could see that when they built the house through the wall, they put a piece of pipe that's big enough to just stick it through the wall. And I'm gonna seal it up on both sides, silicone it, maybe even put a little insulation in there, a little foam. So we'll get all that done once we get her finished. Yep. So friends, I'm ready to make my connections. I have my fitting on here. So my idea, and it may be unconventional, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sleeve it. That is a three inch piece of pipe over two inch. I've got a coupler on that end and a coupler on this end because I want it to be easy to slide. But what I'm gonna do is feed my pecs through it, through the two inch all the way to the other end and I'm gonna sleeve the other end as well. So I have a way of pushing the sleeve up to the house. And then I'm gonna put cement under it. So if I ever have to dig it up and repair it again, I can just dig that in, slide the sleeve back, do my repair and pull the pegs out of the two inch and just slide pegs right back through. And I'm gonna make it happen now, stay tuned. All right, friends, I, I'm gonna give you a little heads up here. Don't do what I did. I was trying to make this connection back to here and it is not a tapered connection, not at all. And when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, what they're gonna have is this kind of connection that will not work. No matter what I did to it, it would not work. So I just cut it off. I went and got, uh, What's crazy is this meter's three quarter. That's a one inch fitting there, but it's three quarter here, but then it's one inch pecs to the house. And it was actually one inch copper to the house before. And uh, so I've got it, and I actually double banded it as well here, but the only way that I could make it be here is they had to give me a bushing to convert it from three quarter back to one inch, then one inch pecs. But make sure that you use this. So the issue is, is if you had a, a situation where you needed to fix this, you just unthread this, dig, pull it out, 
and I made it where that's sleeved so I can slide the sleeve back, cut it off, add back to it, and then put it back on. So if I got in a bind, or I could run another piece through, there's enough room to actually stick another piece in there, right at it anyway, real close. And so we've got this end done, and it is gonna be sleeved, and what I mean by sleeved is it'll have this over it. So it goes up like that to keep it from being crushed. And then the other end, I'm gonna do the same thing. And look, this is probably overkill, but I don't ever wanna to have to do this again. And you can see where it's down a little, so I'll actually put cement under this and make it where it will go up like that to take the pressure off so it can never move. So what I'll do is do that and put a bag of cement under it. Now I won't put cement over it because I want to be able to slide it, but I'll put cement under it so it can't push down. So there you go. Finally, woo. It was a challenge and you see I clamped that one and that is three quarter threaded in to three quarter pipe. That's one inch threaded into three quarter pipe, I should say. I'm also gonna seal this hole up with silicone so no water gets back in the house. So it's kind of dark in here, but this is my, turn the light on. This is the other side. And you can see I have a regulator and then I've got the, that's the hole going through. I'm gonna seal that up as I mentioned. And another thing I'm gonna do is turn this on. So I'll have water in the house. Let's go up and check it out, make sure there's no leaks. Stay tuned. And I had no water till I got this solved, so I'm covered with mud. Let's see what we got. Might have been wash my hands. There we go. A little air. We'll even be a little dirt problem. All right, so I got a few things that I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna silicone it with this. I'm gonna fill it up right around it. And probably before then, I'm gonna put a little bit of foam in there, um, expanding foam, to just kind of fill the gap. Then I'll put this on the outside. Then I'll spray it with that black stuff that seals up uh, that you hear about on TV. And then push this back in place, take the pressure off of it, put cement under it, and then rocks on top of it and we'll be done. So I got a little foam there. While that's drying, I'm gonna go work on the other end. So now that the foam has dried, I'm gonna flex seal it. So seal up anything, right? I said that I was gonna put silicone on it, but then I thought, well, why would you do that? The flex seal is supposed to seal up flooded houses. So we're gonna now slide the sleeve forward, but I'm gonna make sure that the sleeve is not putting pressure on the fitting. I'm gonna put cement under it and then I'll finish. Stay tuned. The other end, I've got the box back in. I've got it sleeved up. You see, I filled it with foam. The sun's in the way. I've got it filled with foam on both ends. So. I think it looks pretty darn good down in there. Yep, I think we're in business. All right, now I poured a bag of concrete in there and you see I got the pipe sitting in the concrete. So if I ever have to dig down, this is gonna keep, the concrete will keep the pipe from sinking down and tearing it off or shearing it off like it was trying to do. Now I'm gonna wet it. All right. So here is the finished product. I'm going to cover her up.
It's not pretty yet. And I don't know what I'm going to do with those giant rocks, but we'll have to do something with them. And I'll have to get the rest of this and fill the hole in. And I'm going to probably have to have some more soil. I'm going to work on it here and there. Yes, I will. So, friends, this is what it looks like today. I've gotten it filled in. Got the rocks. Oh, we used the rocks, actually. And I say we. It was my landscaper. He came and did this. We just did another fill because it sank a little bit and you see he filled it, but it actually looks nice. It turned out nice and the new water line is right up under there. Now it did kill a couple of the rose bushes. We'll replace those in the uh, spring, but they took the rocks and actually used them for part of the landscaping right there. So I think it turned out pretty, pretty nice. Yes, I do. And if you're new to this channel, Adventures of the Spy Guy, I have more than 600 Elvis videos. And don't forget to check out my sidekick, Globe Trotting with Trey. He has over 150. And we both focus on true Elvis stories and what really happened. So if you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.